Hello Year 10, welcome back. We are moving on to a new poem this week called Kamikaze by Beatrice Garland. And this is an important week because we are over halfway through the poems we have to study for your GCSE. So well done for keeping going. Just a reminder that this week's schedule, as usual, you have your virtual live lesson with Mr Rutland at 1.30 on Microsoft Teams. Then on Tuesday, you have your top-up question and answer for uh, Mr. French and Miss Fox, again at 1.30 on Teams. And then Friday is your deadline to submit your completed task and also your recap quiz. So let's move on. And our idea today is the idea of patriotism. So patriotism, just to go back over it, I believe we have looked at it in some other poems and some other ideas is the devotion and vigorous support for your own country so the love of your own country essentially and the patriotism we're looking at today is based in uh, Japanese culture and it's often an idea which is built up during times of war and conflict um, and that's sort of supported by propaganda so propaganda is very uh, heavily focused marketing so posters, um, sort of a real campaign in terms of uh, the what the government tells you and what you're sort of led to believe to sort of build up ideas of being patriotic and sort of feelings of feeling patriotic um, so that you essentially support the war that you are part of. And it reiterates the idea that it is good and it is your duty to die for one's country. And they need to build up that idea. And this is something um, the poem we're looking at in particular is looking at World War Two, where, of course, it was happening quite a lot. But it can mean more than that. Patriotism is quite a wide, quite a personal idea. So I want you to pause the video and just take a minute and think, what does being patriotic mean to you? OK, so if you just have a little think about that. Again, it's a very individual experience, so there's not really exact examples that I could give, but here's some sort of vague ideas you could be thinking about. Um, so being patriotic to you might mean supporting your country in world sport events such as the Olympics or football or rugby. And it might also mean fighting for your country. And it could also just mean upholding your country's values and culture. And, you know, an example for me is celebrating bonfire night. That's a very British thing to do. Um, and that's, you know, that's part of our our, so our, our cultural identity. Um, just a note, though, because this does get quite easily confused, is that patriotism is not nationalism. So patriotism is love for your country and support for your country, whilst nationalism is a more extreme view of that, where you hold your country above and beyond everywhere else. So it's sort of like you put your country on a pedestal and you then devalue and you criticise and you're really negative about other countries. That's not what we're looking at. And those two ideas can get mixed up um, quite easily. So we're just looking at patriotism, which can be a very healthy um, thing to do and to have. So just some context for today's poem. So it's written by Beatrice Garland. And it's important to note that she is a British poet. Um, she's actually a teacher as well. So she's not Japanese. So she's written a really lovely poem, but it's not actually part of her own cultural identity. The poem is about Japanese culture, and it's especially during uh, World War II. And Kamikaze, the name of it, is referencing and it's talking about uh, Kamikaze, who were suicide pilots. So they would crash planes full of explosives into enemy ships during World War II. And they were often sort of young men and they were sort of given this idea again through propaganda and through sort of a, an, an over support of their patriotism to commit the ultimate sacrifice in the name of the emperor. At the time is that what it was considered. And it's also important to note that in Japanese culture and uh, the idea of patriotism, the idea of suicide is very different or certainly was very different. It was viewed as a sort of a noble and an honourable act. And this is something that comes from samurai times, which were uh, the warriors and their, their sort of ethos and their values still sort of play a part in some of Japan today, um, but especially at this time in, in World War II. So there's this act of seppuku, which is a ritual suicide, 
um, if you had sort of lost in a battle, the the owner of that land, the owner of that area would commit a suicidal suicide. So it's, it's a different cultural idea um, and identity to us. So you can see how in World War Two, the idea of a kamikaze pilot was almost their modern version of a samurai at that time. So if you just want to pause the video and copy down some key notes, I have put in bold the really key information I think is there. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the poem now. I've got an animation here. Um, I don't know why they're designed as balls. It seems to be this animator's style, but it's a really nice um, animation of the poem. Her father embarked at sunrise with a flask of water, a samurai sword in the cockpit, a shaven head full of powerful incantations, and enough fuel for a one-way journey into history. But halfway there, she thought, recounting it later to her children, he must have looked far down at the little fishing boats, strung out like bunting on a green-blue translucent sea. And beneath them, arcing in sways, like a huge flag waved first one way, then the other, in a figure of eight, the dark shoals of fishes flashing silver as their bellies swivel towards the sun and remembered how he and his brothers, waiting on the shore, built cairns of pearl-grey pebbles to see who withstood longest the turbulent inrush of breakers, bringing their father's boat safe, yes, grandfather's boat, safe to the shore, salt sodden, awash with cloud-marked mackerel, black crabs, feathery prawns, the loose silver of white bait, and once a tuna, the dark prince, muscular, dangerous. And though he came back, my mother never spoke again in his presence, nor did she meet his eyes. And the neighbors, too, they treated him as though he no longer existed. Only we children still chattered and laughed. Till gradually we too learned to be silent, to live as though he had never returned, that this was no longer the father we loved. And sometimes, she said, he must have wondered which had been the better way to die. Okay, so let's look at the poem in more detail. So the poem is called Kamikaze, as I said, which translated directly means divine wind or a spirit wind. So you have that idea of it being a noble and it's being sort of the right thing to do uh, for them to go fly and commit suicide. This whole poem is written from the perspective of a daughter of a kamikaze pilot who came back to on his mission. He didn't complete it and he returned home. And it describes his life after failing his patriotic duty. And it also describes uh, quite vividly the moment in which he imagines he made his decision to not go through with it. And that's what this first part of the poem is describing. So it's describing how he went out at sunrise with just water and a samurai sword. Again, samurais were a part of sort of Japan's culture, they were warriors, and so that really represents the cultural heritage and the patriotism straight away that he was holding the sword in his um, plane. But it was also a practical thing, so the idea that if he didn't die in the act of crashing his plane, he could have a quick death and an honourable death by his own hands and not the enemy's. So it's a little bit of a, a dark um, item to have with him. And so the idea that he's in his plane and he has a head full of powerful incantations. Incantations meaning sort of words for a magic spell or a charm. If you think back to Macbeth, the witches speak incantations. And what it really means is that it's the propaganda. So it's everything that's been told to him, everything that he believes that this is his duty, that this is what he should do, that this is what it means to be patriotic for your country. So it's almost like he's being mind washed again. You could even compare it with another poem we've looked at, which is London by William Blake, where he says the line about the mind forged manacles where people are brainwashed by the, uh, the, uh, the oppression from the Industrial Revolution. So there's a nice comparison with another poem there. And enough fuel for a one-way journey. So obviously they weren't planning to come back 
so they only had fuel for a one-way journey is almost quite cruel um sort of penny pinching that he didn't even have enough um, in case there was a mistake or anything and the idea that he's flying into a one-way journey into history it's sort of an idea that he's being remembered as a legend that they would have been honored and sort of would have been written in the history books with a lot of praise that's what again what these they were told at the time and that was sort of the building of their patriotic feelings and then she goes on to describe what she believes he would have thought so halfway there sort of and she's telling this to her children she thought recounting it later to her children he must have looked at far down at the little fishing boats. So um, being an island culture, the sea is a very traditional way of life in Japan. And then we go into this poem with this very vivid description of his life and his upbringing and the nature that he can see from his uh, plane as he's flying out, which, you know, we have this beautiful image of the little fishing boat strung out like bunting on a green blue translucent sea. It's just really beautiful imagery. And then below, describing the, uh, the fishes. So a shoal is a large group of fishes swimming together, flashing their bellies as swiveled around the sun. And so we have this image here when he's describing, or sorry, when his daughter is describing the nature he can see beneath him and how it's all a big group of people. So we have lots of nature imagery of communities together, which contrasts his individual and suicide mission. So he's just flying over onto a one-way way, one way into history and can just see the groups of nature below and beautiful nature below. And then he starts to reminisce about his childhood and how he's feeling sort of homesick. So how he was with his brothers on the shore and they built khans, which are, those are sort of a mound of rough stones built as a memorial or landmark. So just piles of stones, just a little childish game they would play to see which would withstand the turbulent inrush of breakers. So breakers being the sea, the waves coming across the shore and turbulent meaning um, moving unsteadily and violently. So it's a lovely reminiscence about his childhood with his brother and being um, by the sea and in traditional things. So if you want to just pause the video and get those annotations down to your poem, we'll look at the second half. Okay, so we continue with this stanza, Yes, Grandfather's Boat. Again, she's telling this to her own children about her father. Um, but she's also managing what, imagining what her father would have thought and seen when he made this, this, this decision to turn back and to come home instead of fulfilling his mission as a kamikaze pilot. And he's describing this uh, grandfather's boat. So it's sort of this idea that he's thinking about his own family and his own childhood, which again brings up this idea of homesickness and just reiterates what he'll be missing. And we really see that with this stanza where it's just beautifully describing um, nature, describing fish, you know, mackerels, cloud marked, feathery prawns. I'd never heard the description of a prawn being feathery. Um, and white bait with silver. All these sort of really beautiful adjectives are coming in to give a really vivid description of the wealth of the sea. So it sort of shows how maybe he was realising what he was about to lose when he's looking down and seeing how beautiful nature is. And then we have this last line, um, and once a tuna, the dark prince, muscular and dangerous. So this could be seen as a metaphor for the pilot himself. Um, so he's basically almost like the sun who goes against the others, like the dark prince or sort of the, the, um, the odd sheep is often said. And you could say that that's almost a reference to him being a prodigal son. So a prodigal son is, is actually comes back from a biblical story that has become a term for a child who abandons home to make their own way out in the world, only to realise that they were being foolish and to return asking for forgiveness. So he almost has the same story of the prodigal son and the same idea that he's, a, you know, 
abandoning his duty and coming back for forgiveness. But of course, he doesn't actually get forgiveness. As we move into this next stanza, we see that actually him returning, um, his mother, uh, his wife, sorry, her mother, never spoke again in his presence and never looked at him in the eye. And all of his neighbours treated him like that as well, basically as if he no longer existed. So he returns home having not completed his suicide mission and his family and his neighbours are ashamed of him because he's not completed his duty for his country. He's not fulfilled his patriotic act. And it's, uh, it's really sad, actually, when you're sort of looking at it, because even when the children, so herself, she's talking about herself there when she was young, would still be laughing and, you know, chatting along. But then actually, even for them, they realised the shame and they became silent as well in his presence. So this sort of the idea of his shame and the isolation he lives after returning from failing his duty is sort of passed through the generations. It's uh, it's a huge deal for them and it's something that uh, they never recover from. And you can see how this effect in this in this last two lines of the poem, how they treat him like he's already died when he's returned and he could just have completed his duty and have had the same experience as to how he lived the rest of his life. Um, so he must have wondered which was the better way to die, having even just committed suicide and committed his uh, patriotic act and have gone down in history, or having come back as he did and lived with years of being treated with silence and shame. So it really represents the sort of the cruelty of patriotism the idea of how it can pull people apart sometimes. So um, in reflection, the whole poem, Beatrice Gartland's poem reflects the immense patriotic pressure brought to bear on pilots to carry out kamikaze missions in World War II. The pilot who abandons his mission after reflecting on nature and his childhood is shunned by his family and friends for the rest of his life as an unpatriotic failure. If you just want to pause the poem now and get those information, those points down, we'll move on to look at structure. OK, so this is a really interesting poem to look at structurally. It's quite simple and it's a narrative poem. So it's a story that we're being told through the eyes of this pilot's daughter. And because it's through her eyes, and this all happened when she was young, she's actually um, sort of talking about it almost from a third person perspective. You know, she wasn't actually in the in the plane with him. She wasn't even really old enough to understand the story when she was younger. So she's talking about it from what she imagines and she's retelling it from to her children as well, telling what happened to him, what happened to uh, his life. And it's a very simple poem, so we have six line stanzas. There's no regular rhyme or rhythm, but all the lines are sort of a relative length. They're all quite short. And that sort of gives the idea of her telling this to her children, that she is speaking it to him. And what's really interesting is when you look at the punctuation. So the whole poem is actually just three sentences, which I've colour coded here for you. So the first sentence is green. And that's the longest, and it's really describing um, what happened at the time. So this is the history, this is the past that she doesn't actually know. Um, she's just been told little bits of it, and she's talked sort of, she sort of created her own idea of what he might have been thinking and what he might have been seeing. So it's sort of almost this distant idea. She can't really talk about it in the first person, but she does give this really beautiful and vivid description of what he might have been seeing and she gives a lot of time to that in the poem so you can see that she's almost trying to show that actually even though he was shamed for the rest of his life um, it's very human very natural for him to have considered his own life and reminisced about his own life and turned back rather than complete his mission it's almost as if she's trying to defend his decision uh, but then we move into the second sentence, which is in blue. And this is actually her own experience. So this is when she was growing up. So she can talk about this. 
And it's really interesting that this whole sentence is italicized, so it's uh, slanty. The technical word is slanty. And that almost gives the idea that it's whispered, um, that it's like she's talking about a really shameful secret. And she's almost confessing that we didn't talk to him, we didn't acknowledge him. And when we were old enough to learn, we did that as well. I did that as well to my own father. And it's almost as if she starts to regret that decision. And then the final sentence, of course, is almost the saddest, just the shortest one. And sometimes she said, he must have wondered which had been the better way to die. So it's really suggesting what, again, it's not actually what he told her. Um, it's just what she's thinking about and almost her guilt at having isolated and been really harsh to her father for this really hard decision and sort of suggesting what he might have thought at his sort of non-existence. So there's lots you can talk about with that in terms of those three sentences for such a large poem. And there's a lot to be said for how much she gives to the first part when she's recounting what happened um, to her father when he was out on his flight. And the fact that she's actually, it's almost as if she's so guilty. But it's also quite jarring you could say not having a regular scheme sort of gives the idea that it's uneven that it doesn't fit anything naturally so that sort of emphasizes the idea that she's telling this to her children so oral storytelling it uh, gives it a natural flow to the poem but it also sort of has this idea that it can represent the sort of the turbulence so the unrested and the repressed feelings of the daughter the fact that she sort of almost whispers the confession of the second sentence and just leaves that last third sentence for the reader to consider. So there's a lot you can say there about the structure and about the sentence length. If you want to just get those down into your poem, we will move on to the final slide. So to summarise, we've looked at Kamikaze briefly by Beatrice Garland. We've looked at the key idea this week, which is patriotism some context, meaning, imagery, and structure. This week's task is going to be slightly different, just to mix it up a bit. I'd like you to write your own questions on Kamikaze. So if you were sort of creating a revision booklet for you later in year 11, uh, write your own questions to test yourself on the key information for Kamikaze. Have a look at the last questions we've set in uh, other poems if you want some ideas. But you want to look at things like uh, the structure, some sort of basic information such as who wrote it, uh, what's it about, some basic comprehension and maybe some key quotes you think are really important. So I want you to start building and thinking about your own revision when you're getting uh, closer to your GCSEs. You also have another recap but this week is slightly different. It's not going to be a show my homework quiz, it's actually going to be a picture quiz which I will put up which you have to um, work out what poem and quote each picture is. You have your petter as usual. How does kamikaze explore the idea of patriotism during conflict? And we're also going to do a little comparison with checking out my history. Mr Rutland will also add some tasks in as well for you to build up your knowledge on this poem. Um, just a reminder of course you've got today, you've got Monday. Just a reminder of course of the system well done for working so hard, guys. Um, hopefully I'll see a few of you later on in this term before the summer breaks. But you're doing really well and keep on going. Have a great week.